This is how you take a standard panning shot and make it ultra wide. There's so much to learn today. We'll learn how to stabilize your footage and export images from that video clip. We'll learn how to create a base plate composite from those clips. We'll also learn how to do set extensions using AI tools. We'll also learn how to stabilize and track your original footage so that it correctly overlays on top of this composite image we've just created. Before we get started, why would you want to do this? This gives you, the editor, the tools to reframe and recompose the shots different to what the camera person initially intended it to be. It allows you to tell a different story than what the original purpose of the shot was. Import your footage into a timeline and then let's go into Fusion. So bring in a Saber node and on the right, choose a folder. I'm just going to save it in this folder. With the Saber node selected, go to Settings and in the Frame Render Script, paste this code. What this is saying is that in the composition, if the current time is divisible by 30, then export, else do not export. So that's what this expression is telling us. I've left the script in the description for you to copy paste. Now, after you've done that, go to Fusion and hit Render All Sabers. So now, as you can see, every 30th frame is being rendered. Cool. And if you can go to the folder, you'll see that every 30th frame has been exported. Now, I'm going to do the next step in Photoshop, but if you do not have Photoshop, you can do exactly the same thing both in GIMP or in photop.com. The links to both are in the description below. In Photoshop, go to File, Automate, Photo Merge, and then choose the Perspective option, and then go to Browse and choose all these images that we've just created. Hit OK, and hit OK again. So what's happening now is Photoshop is importing those images and it's going to try to align it based on the data in the image. So let's take a look at what it does. Cool, so now it's created a base plate for us. Um, it's taken information from various frames and it's put this together. Now, obviously, because the camera panned in a very specific way, it was not able to fill in these places, but this is what we'll fill in using AI tools afterwards. You will notice an obvious problem is that the car is visible here. We don't want that. So with very simple masking tools in Photoshop, let's, let's find the frame that's contributing to it. So this frame is contributing to the car. So I'm going to choose that, choose the mask, bring up a brush. Let's bring a really big brush, make the hardness zero and keep the flow at around 50%. And now with the color chosen as black, simply clean it up. Cool. Now let's contribute to that area from, from another part of the frame. So let's choose this one maybe and just paint it in. We are now going to export this and use some AI tools to fill in these blanks. Save as, export, quick export as PNG. Now once you've done that, it's step for set extensions using AI tools. Bring the image that we just exported from Photoshop into Dolly. The link for Dolly is in the description below. So now, Inside Dolly, click Upload an Image and import the image that we just exported from Photoshop. Skip cropping. And you'll have this in Dolly. So Dolly is not free. You need to purchase Dolly credits in order to be able to do this. If you do not want to purchase Dolly credits, there's another AI tool called Stable Diffusion that can do something very similar. And the link for Stable Diffusion is in the description below. The method that I'm going to talk about is called inpainting. So there might be other tools in the future that can do the same thing. You'll see a brand new generation frame show up, a 1024 by 1024 generation frame. So what we are going to do is we're going to place a generation frame just like this, overlapping most of the image with a bit of the area that we want to import. And then in the toolbar here, we'll just say expand image and let it generate. What Dolly just did was it looked at the information in that image. It tried to identify what the area could be. So look, it's done a really good job here. Let me look at the various options it has created. This looks better to me. The curves look very clean here, so I'm just going to accept this. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to delete this area and I will try to fill it in in another pass. The reason I'm deleting it is because the, the black area looked too black, but there's a lot of worn out edges here, which, which I kind of want to keep. Let's do an overlap here, something like that. 
and expand image generate. <laughs> it's it's gone a bit overboard and it's tried to add images. I don't want any of that. I just want a blank canvas. Yeah, that, that looks all right, doesn't it? This looks even better because the, the curves are following the track. Let's go back to the left, hit generate again. Now understand that it's not going to do a perfect job. It's it's still interpretive, it's, it's AI. So after we do this, we'll bring it back into Photoshop and we'll clean up what we don't like. That's nice. It, Look at all this area that it's filled in. There's nothing here. It's it's it tried to create some sort of a background. It looks all right to me. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go with this one. I, I think it's passable. Um, it's good enough for what we're trying to do. Um, accept, accept. So that's how you do canvas extension in Dolly. If you're liking the graphics in this video, I use motion VFX templates for these. They help me save a lot of time during editing and post-processing. If you'd like to get your hands on them, I have a link in the description below. So once that is done, top right, download the image. Now, after you've exported that image from Dolly, bring it back into Photoshop just to see if there's anything that can be clint away here. So this, this line looks odd to me. So I'm just gonna use the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. Now, after you've done this, save the image and bring this back into Resolve. So in Resolve, go back into the edit module, take a look at what the size of the new image is. So this is a 2432 by 1472 image. So I'm gonna use that as my timeline resolution just so that I have the entire working space with me and we can we can then crop in later, that's not the problem. 2432 by 1472 and the timeline frame rate is 29.97. So these numbers come from the new image we created using Photoshop and Dolly and the timeline frame rate has to be the frame rate of the original video clip that we are using for this purpose. Cool, so now you have that, import the base frame and import the video clip on top of that. Set the length of the base frame to be the same as the, the video clip. So you get something like this, adjust the frame and try to get it to overlap correctly. One thing you'll notice is that after it came out of Photoshop, the car here looks stretched and that's something that the panoramic merge would do. It would start stretching your edges. So you're not going to be able to get a one-to-one -one mapping here, but try to do it as close as possible. Uh, it'll help if you reduce the opacity and you can see through both layers. So let's do that. And here I'm, I'm just going with a good enough. Um, as long as it's good enough, it's good enough is what I would say. This I can live with. Right, so you have something like this. Cool. So what's the next step? The next step is that we need to get this new frame to track with the extended canvas that we now have. And to do that, create a new Fusion clip and bring this into Fusion. Media in one is our base plate. So let's change this to base plate. And media in two is our old original clip, let's call, call this original clip for, with the original clip selected, let's bring in a tracker node and then choose a place of high contrast. So I'm just gonna choose this dot over here, that pattern. Let's start tracking forward. I'm going to track this until this pattern goes out of frame. So in the inspector under tracker one, start tracking. I'm just looking at it here. It's tracking fine. It's tracking fine, and then stop. So take a look at the tracker here. You can see the tracker is continuing to track correctly until about this point, at which time it no longer tracks correctly, it, it starts jumping. So I'm going to use the tracker information until frame number 180, and now I need to give it a brand new place to track. To continue using an existing tracker with a different track point, what you can do in the path center, change from pattern center to track center append. This will now let you move the tracking point to a different point whilst retaining the anchor. Now, I just want to scrub forward to find a point that does not get obfuscated by the car. So I'm, I'm looking at this, this point here. So I could potentially use that 
for the next 100 frames to track. So with track center up end selected, let's move the tracking point to this pattern here. And now you want to hit track forward from current time. Don't click track forward because you want to retain the tracking information that we've already done for the first 180 frames with the other tracking point that we had. So track forward from current point and keep looking at the track to make sure that it's not going out of frame. Keep tracking. It's, it's already lost it. So that's a poor track. Yes. Let's go back to track 180. I want to find something else to track. Maybe, maybe this point here, maybe this junction. Let's do that. Okay, it's tracking that well. So, okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. I'm ready to stop it once it goes out of frame. Stop. Okay, so it's gotten me up to about frame 400, I think. Maybe 390 to be safe. Okay. Now, where's the tracker? So the tracker is here. Let's move the tracker to another place. Let's find something else. So let's maybe find, let's maybe do this pattern here. And again, track forward. Stop. That pattern has gotten us to frame four, to frame 500, a few more frames left. So again, bring it here. Just want to track this place and track forward again. Done. If I play it, you'll see that the track still works. You can see the track tracking here, but this is not quite what we wanted, right? We wanted the frame to move so that it then gets placed on top of the background plate that we created. How do you make it to move? The way you make it to move is in the tracker on the inspector, go to operation and under operation, choose match move. And in merge, choose background only. Now, if you look at what's happening, you'll see that the frame is now following the background plate correctly. So the next thing we need to do is we need to mask out the object of interest, in this case, the green car. So let's extract this object using a magic mask. Now, if you want an in-depth tutorial in how masking works and the magic mask in particular, there's a video linked here that'll be useful for you. So with the tracker node selected, shift space, magic mask, connect it to the tracker node, make sure that the original clip is being sent to the tracker in the yellow input and the tracker output goes to the magic mask in the yellow input as well. Now, with the magic mask selected, find a frame that is representative, so maybe this one, and add a stroke on the car. Let's look at the magic mask in viewer one. Because of the nature of how this is, we can be a bit generous with our mask in, in that we can actually go wider than what we want and blend them in much better. With the magic mask selected, go to the matte input on the inspector and with the arrow dilate slider, dilate it quite a bit, like go wide. The reason we're going wide is because I don't want to lose the smoke that's coming from the back tires. If you choose the magic mask with very less tolerance, it's only going to crop out the car itself and you're going to lose the smoke and you'll lose the shadows, which we don't want to do. Be generous with your dilation and then start blurring the edges out so that it fades much better. So if you look at what that's looking like on the right hand side, Right, so the edges are quite clean. So now that the dilation works well, with the magic mask selected, go back to tracking and select track forward and back. Magic mask will do its thing. It's just going to go through the entire video clip and track the object out. Okay, the magic mask is now done. So let's look at what's going on. Let's bring this into a single viewer. That looks good. That uh, definitely works. Okay, so now we have this. Now, obviously there's an issue here in that the original car is still here. The reason I didn't clean this up earlier was because I wanted this car as a size reference when I overlaid them, but I no longer need it. So go back to Photoshop, bring up this image that we created earlier in the video. And now we are going to mask this out using the clone stamp tool. Once you've cleaned it up, just export it one more time. Go back to Fusion, 
and import this new exported file that you've just created. Now, back in Fusion, import that. This becomes your new base plate. So remove the actual base plate and add this in as your base plate. And there you go. That's the car gone. You're still seeing the edge of the frame coming in. And the reason for that was because our, our expand threshold was quite high, that it's actually hitting the edge of the frame. So I'm having issues on the right here. So I will crop in up to that point and we can crop left up to here. Cool. And then put reposition in the center. That's your new frame. It's looking good. <laughs> That's nice. And if you take a look here, we have not lost the smoke. It looks natural. We have not lost the shadows. You can still see the shadows. And that's why we had to expand the blur radius in the magic mask. I'm a tiger on the prowl. Let me know if this was useful for you. I'd love to know your comments in the comment section below. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye.